now let we have the set a which is containing the elements 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 which we have already discussed then what is the smallest what is the cardinality of the smallest reflexive relation which o possible over this set a then what is the cardinality of the largest reflexive relation which is possible over this set a so what is the smallest reflexive relation what is the smallest reflexive relation which is possible that is going to contain 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 this is the smallest reflexive relation which is possible over a so the, if a is containing if the cardinality of set a is n then the smallest reflexive relation is going to be having n elements right now if we can say what is the largest reflexive relation what is the largest reflexive relation it is 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 and so on that means all the elements which be which will be in the cross product of a and a the cross product of a and a all the elements 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 2 comma 3 2 comma 4 let me write it again 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 2 comma 3 2 comma 4 3 comma 1 3 comma 2 3 comma 3 and 3 comma 4 4 comma 1 4 comma 2 4 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 this is the largest reflexive relation which is possible because in this relation obviously we are having these diagonal elements that is 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 and a part of this all the element, uh, other elements are also present that means the cardinality of the largest reflexive relation will be n square the cardinality of the largest reflexive relation will be n square now let me take you let me take uh, one or two more exam one or two more questions on flexible relations now identify which of the following is false it is saying if r1 is reflexive then every superset of r1 is reflexive if r1 is reflexive then every subset of r1 is reflexive and a and b both are true a and b both are false okay which of the following is false let us just change it which of the following is true or false or which of the fall option is correct instead of this we can change it which of the option is correct which one of the option is correct okay so assume we have a set a which is containing 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 and over this set a there is a relation r1 which is reflexive and the relation r1 is going to contain 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 because these diagonal elements should always be within a reflexive relation out of these diagonal elements assume we are having the element 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 okay it is a reflexive relation now there is a relation r2 which is a superset of r1 superset of r1 that means superset means r1 is a subset of r2 r2 may contain some elements which are not present in r1 that means it can contain some more extra elements what are the extra elements we can have 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 2 comma 3 and 3 comma 4 you can see clearly you can see that r1 is a subset of r2 that means r2 is a superset of r1 obviously if a relation has to be reflexive then it should contain all the diagonal elements and if you take a superset of that diagonal uh, that set then obviously in that superset these diagonal elements should be there because if these diagonal elements are not there then obviously we cannot say that this, that r2 is not a superset of r1 okay so r1 is reflexive then every superset of r1 is reflexive this one is true okay next one is if r1 is reflexive then every subset of r1 is reflexive every subset they are discussing about the subsets that means if r1 is containing the elements 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 1 2 and 1 2 3 in this case we can a relation r3 we can take a relation r3 which is a subset of r1 assume the relation r3 is going to contain 1 1 1 2 and 2 3 obviously you can clearly see that r3 is a subset of r1 and in this case i have taken a proper subset r3 is a proper subset of r1 right so r3 is a subset of r1 and r3 is a subset of r1 but you can see r3 is not reflexive r3 is not reflexive but r1 is 
reflexive r1 is reflexive r2 is reflexive so you can say if r1 is reflexive then every subset of r1 may not be reflexive and this one is false this one is false so option number a is 2 b is false so option c is obviously false and option d is obviously false so out of these four options option number a is true and everything else is false right so in this example let me take one more example after this now let us take this question it says if r1 and r2 are reflexive then r1 intersection r2 is reflexive if r1 and r2 are reflexive then r1 union r2 is reflexive right so let me take a very simple example for this assume we have a set a which is 1 2 3 and 4 on the set a we have a relation r1 which is 1,1 comma 2,2 3,3 4,4 1,2 there's a relation r2 which is 1,1 comma 2,2 comma 3,3 4 comma 4 and 2 comma 1. Okay, so you can see clearly see R1 is reflexive and R2 is reflexive. Now, if I am taking R1 intersection R2, if I am taking R1 intersection R2, then we are going to get 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, and 4 comma 4. See, obviously, if R1 has to be reflexive, then it should contain all these diagonal elements. If R2 has to be reflexive, it should contain all these diagonal elements. So. even if you take a intersection operation between these two reflexive relation then obviously you should get these diagonal elements uh, a part of these diagonal elements there can be some more elements which may be present so if r1 and r2 are reflexive then r1 intersection r2 will always be reflexive in the same way if r1 and r2 are reflexive then r1 union r2 so what is r1 union r2 in this case it is 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1. So this is also reflexive. That means if R1 R2 reflexive, then R1 intersection R2 is reflexive. It is true. And R2 R1 union R2 is reflexive. It is also true. Therefore, option number C is correct. Okay, it is very simple. Now these two options, the these two questions which I have discussed here, I have discussed this question in the previous case. I have discussed a question. Then these two questions are essentially only discussing the closure properties. the closure properties what are the what is the closure of a relation or you can say what is the closure actually what is the closure assume we have a set this is a set of integers this is a set of integers or maybe this is a set of positive integers this is a set of positive integers now if i take any two integer from this set of positive integers assume it is an integer x or y or we can take any instance of values maybe this is an integer which is 5 and this is an integer 6 and we perform any operation between these two integers for example if i am doing 5 plus 6 then i will get a integer which is number which is 13 now if this resultant number if this resultant number is also present in the same set then we can say that this set is actually uh, this uh, set of integer number is actually closed under the relation which is addition so we can say set of positive integers are closed under the operation or closed under the operation which is addition right but if we take a subtraction operation for example if i am doing 5 minus 6 then i'm getting a number which is minus 1 but this minus 1 number is not present in the same set it is not present in the same set it lies outside this set so we can say the set of positive integers is not closed it is not closed under the operation under the operation which is subtraction in the same way if i perform a uh, multiplication operation if i do 5 multiplied by 6 then i'm going to get something which is uh, 30 now this 30 will lie inside this particular set so we can say the set of positive integer numbers are closed under the operation which is multiplication but if you take a division operation for example if i do 5 divided by 6 then we'll get a point number we'll get a point number which is which which may be a real number right so but real number is not inside this set real number are lying outside this set so you can say set of positive integer numbers are not closed under the operation which is division now in these questions in the previous question this question i essentially only discussed about what is a closure property 
For example, here this question is saying if an R1 and R2 are reflexive relations. For example, that means if this is a set of reflexive relations, if this is a set of reflexive relation, out of this set of reflexive relation, I have taken two relation. One is R1 and the second relation is R2. I am saying if R1 and R2 are reflexive relation, then R1 intersection R2 is reflexive. Intersection means if I do an intersection between these two oper operations, then I will get a one more relation which is R3. And this relation R3 is lying inside this particular set only. That means reflexive relations are closed under the operation which is intersection. In the same way, if you do a union of two reflexive relations, that means you are only going to get a reflexive relations. So you can say reflexive relations are closed under the operation which is union. Right. In the same way, you can say reflexive relations are closed under the operation which is in the pre previous case we have discussed it the reflexive relations are closed under the operation which is superset that means if you take a superset of reflexive relation then you will get a reflexive relation so it is closed under the operation superset but reflexive relations are not closed under the operation which is subset in the same way reflexive relations are not closed under the operation which is set difference reflexive relations are not closed under the operation which is symmetric difference so what is set difference assume this is the relation r1 and this is the relation R2. R1 and R2 both are reflexive. In this case, if I take R1 minus R2, that is a set difference operation. So this set difference operator is going to give us the uh, values which are present in R1 but not in R2. So what is R1 minus R2? It is 1 comma 2. Right. And what is R2 minus R1? It is 2 comma 1. Why? Because this 2 comma 1 is lying here but it is not there. Right. So but if you take a set difference operation between these two reflexive relations then you can clearly see we are getting a new relation which is not reflexive which is not reflexive so you can say the reflexive relations are not closed are not closed under the operation which is set difference now if you take an operation which is symmetric difference what is symmetric difference that means r1 symmetric difference with R2. That means it should contain the elements which are present in R1 but not in R2 at the same time which are present in R2 but not in R1. So what are the elements? These are 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1. So you can clearly see that if you take a symmetric difference then you are not getting a relation which is reflexive. You are not getting a relation which is reflexive. So you can clearly say that the reflexive relations are not close to the operation which is symmetric difference. So these are the closure properties. Okay, so now let us look at what is an irreflexive relation.